and especially for him. In fact, he had been undergoing chemotherapy for, what, two years mm -hmm. before he finally came up to John and I and, and said, am I going to die? You know, he kept that inside for quite a while, you know, and, uh, you know, and we told him, you know, Cheers. no, of course not, you know. We would have told you if that was going to happen, you know, we would have, have let you know. Well, it's, it's crazy because <clears throat> Not only one have I really not talked about it, but even to this day, you know, me and my parents have still really not sat down and really went through everything. You know, obviously I have the scars <laughs> to remind me and, and uh, you know, exactly what I went through. Because, you know, as I said, I was eight years old, so it's hard to remember, you know, everything. Everything becomes a blur to a degree, except for, you know, certain moments. I remember the surgeries and, the main, one of the main things was, you know, I, I had, you know, they basically did a spinal tap to make sure that none of that stuff was, you know, in the bone or spinal fluid. So anybody that's ever had that done, um, you don't, it's an experience you don't forget because they can't put you under for that. You know, it's too dangerous, or at least at that time it was. So to be awake and have them basically pull spinal fluid sucked. <laughs> Most painful thing ever. I mean, it was a whole other degree of pain that I can't even describe that I still, you know, people pass out when, that, when they do have that done. Being almost at times, you know, bedridden or, you know, multiple times I believe I had pneumonia, so I was hospitalized for weeks, so music was my only escape from it. Through that time period, the biggest records to me would have been Motley Crue, Shout at the Devil, uh, in Theater of Pain, Iron Maiden Live After Death, and Power Slave, and then the Kiss stuff, the 70s Kiss stuff. I'm a huge Motley Crue fan, so I like pretty much everything that they've done. Uh, holding Theater of Pain, I pulled this record honestly because one of my favorite guitar solos is Mick Mars's solo in Home Sweet Home. Okay, so what I'm holding is Somewhere Back in Time, which is the best of Iron Maiden. Unfortunately, they don't have Live After Death, which is one of my favorite live records. The thing that I really loved was the dueling guitars in Maiden and Bruce's vocals. Um, they, they impacted me heavily, especially for during uh, Power Slave and then into Live After Death. It was one of the records I played nonstop. Um, they're probably top three favorite band of all time. I feel like in this process of going through the three and a half years of chemotherapy is where my ears really started to develop as a listener, um, where I almost was hearing things three-dimensional is the only way I can describe it, where I was really hearing things almost like a multi-track and being able to single out things. Um, it's really hard for me to just to describe more than it just sounded three-dimensional to me. And I think that's really helped me, um, as I said, developing my ears as a listener of what all is going on and how things are working with one another with guitar and how the bass sits with the, with the drums and, and all that. Come out 84. So I would have been 10 years old. Yeah. So this was the first record that I bought with my own money. And it's a great record. I mean, you got, you know, I want to rock and we're not going to take it. The price. This might have been the first record when my parents seen the cover that scared them. <laughs> well, he would have been cancer free actually after those treatments well really before that technically but as with any cancer you're not considered free cured whatever for five years afterwards <laughs> <laughs>